Hi everyone. I've been asked by several long time subscribers to take a look at the latest version of Roots Magic. That's Roots Magic 10. Roots Magic 9 came out and Roots Magic 9, in my opinion, was what Roots Magic 8 should have been. But still it lacked some features, it lacked some functionality. And I'd probably go into that in a sort of a where are we now video sometime in the future. Because those things are easily forgotten. Anybody who follows me knows I jumped ship at Roots Magic 7. Once I seen the shape of Roots Magic 8, it wasn't for me. Roots Magic 9 really pushed the associations feature and a lot of users got very excited about that. Associations are nothing new, they've always been part of the JETCOM standard and they've been part of Family Historian since 2002, one of the earliest versions. My concern, even though they're part of the JETCOM standard, was are Roots Magic respecting that and allowing users to transfer that data to other programs? Most users will have heard the term JEDCOM. JEDCOM is the exchange mechanism behind any genealogy program. So Roots Magic 10 came along and it added another two features. It added DNA tracking and it added health. Now health's already part of the JEDCOM standard. There's an illness attribute. You can put the description in there. You can put notes in there, etc., etc. Add sources, whatever. So I was very interested to see how this new Roots Magic health tracking worked. The DNA feature that they've introduced in Roots Magic 10, I just had a look at it this morning for the first time. It is a standalone thing within Roots Magic. In other words, it's a proprietary trap. That means any of the data that you've labored over and put into Roots Magic, whether that be health, whether that be associations, or whether it be DNA tracking, that is all contained within Roots Magic alone. It's not going to transfer to my heritage. It's not going to transfer to ancestry, family search, or any other genealogy compliant program. And that includes family tree maker, legacy family tree, family historian, all of those things. So you're trapped with that data within Roots Magic, which is not very acceptable from my point of view. Remember to subscribe and hit the bell if you want to get notifications of further videos. In the third video down the line, I'm going to show how I've started to track DNA matches that we get off my heritage, ancestry, etc. And I build those out like parts of a jigsaw, and then hopefully someday I get them to become part of the main puzzle. The health things I've already showed in previous videos, how I can flag those on charts in Family Historian. I track some cardiac disease in my ancestors and it's interesting to see which line that's actually coming down, if there is any common pattern. And I've showed that in a previous video on dynamic charting. So anyway, let's jump in and take a look at Roots Magic as it is now. This is Roots Magic 10. Whether you use Family Search, Ancestry, MyHeritage, Find My Past Online Services, or possibly software like Family Tree Maker, Legacy Family Tree, Heritus or Ancestral Quest for other research needs. These new Roots Magic features will not transfer, so do be warned. Lots of you will know I use Family Historian 7 now, which is probably due an upgrade in the next year or so, but it's not on this list. The reason why is that Family Historian provides a direct import of Roots Magic data, although they recognize the association feature is pretty useless when compared to witness events. Your first thought might be, well, of course they'll say that, but you'd be wrong. Family Historian was first released around 2002, and that very first version had associations built in, but no fanfare like Roots Magic has created. The reason they were included was that they are part of the JEDCOM 5.5 standard, and Family Historian is built to be 100% JEDCOM compatible. That still doesn't make associations useful though. I'm going to add a few associations in the latest version of Roots Magic 10 and show you the first problem. This comment on the Roots Magic forum shows Family Historian 7 supports JEDCOM 7 in out, and a large group of German programs do so as well. This experienced Roots Magic user states Roots Magic 9 only exports 5.5.1, which is a JEDCOM version. However, JEDCOM 5.5 was released in January 1996 and contains support for associations. So you must ask yourself why your software provider, that is Roots Magic, 28 years later they have still not supported it. Here it is right here, and Family Historian have supported the associations within the JEDCOM structure since 2002, yes, 22 years ago. You will also notice in that 28 year old JEDCOM 5.5 standard, the support for entering the age at the time of an event and many other standard JEDCOM tags. Roots Magic does not support age, association and many other tags. This user is excited about associations hoping to have them track slave owners and the formerly enslaved. 
Associations are not useful for that, as they're one-to-one relationships rather than one-to-many. You associate one person with another, and you can't associate them with several. Let me try to explain that further. If you have two neighbours you want to associate, then you associate each to the other, which is one association. These four people in my database are all neighbours. Let me give the association of neighbour to Frank and George. And here we can see that they're both associated. However, if you want to associate four neighbours, that now requires three associations to associate each to the other. One less than the total number of people, right? Well, no, that's wrong. You now require six associations. Let me explain and demonstrate. I quickly associate Frank to John and William, and here are all three associations shown they're all neighbours, except they're not. Let me look at George. George only has one neighbour, and that's Frank. He's not a neighbour of John or William, but surely they're all neighbours. Not true. To associate these four people as neighbours of each other, you require six associations, and here's the formula. Number of people multiplied by the number of people minus one, and then divided by two. In the case of the four neighbours, that's four multiplied by four minus one, which is three, giving us 12, and then divided by two, showing we need six associations in total. Let me use the example of a slave owner and 30 enslaved people to show just how associations don't work in Roots Magic. Each of the 30 enslaved persons need to be associated to the slave owner, so that's 30 associations to begin with. Each of the 30 enslaved people now have to have an association with each other. Enslaved person 1 needs to have an association with enslaved person 2, 3, 4, etc. That comes to a staggering 435 associations just to associate those 30 enslaved people. 30 multiplied by 30 minus 1, which is 29, giving us 870, and then divided by 2 showing we need 435 associations. Do the math yourself, or get a bit of paper and start drawing lines between little boxes. When added to the 30 previous associations with the slave owner, that now comes to a total of 465 associations required to associate these 31 people. You can see why that's not going to be an acceptable solution, despite Roots Magic suggesting that it is. One of the association types you'll notice here is Grave Neighbours. Again, associations in Roots Magic are limited to one-to-one -to -one associations. In the UK, Ireland and several other countries, burials are stacked in a burial plot. It's not unusual to find six burials and various family names. The problem in Roots Magic, which goes right back to the introduction of witness events, is they were never searchable, easily reported or selectable for the people list, so many Roots Magic users just abandoned them. However, there are much better solutions than associations, and I'll show you that in a future video. That explains the downsides of associations, but remember, these associations do not export beyond Roots Magic to online services or other genealogy programs. You could easily enter hundreds of associations only to find you're trapped within Roots Magic. Let me quickly jump in and show how health works. Firstly, I don't see any reason for adding a health tracker. The illness fact is a standard JEDCOM fact which will transfer to Ancestry, MyHeritage and other genealogy software. The Roots Magic health tracker doesn't transfer to online or other software, so what is the point? The skeptic in me wonders if the developer is trying to trap you within the Roots Magic program, but you can make your own mind up on that one. Here we are again with John. I click this health button on the left, I can add various health conditions, dates or date spans, and notes, but I cannot add sources. Sourcing is probably the most important discipline in genealogy, as it states exactly where a fact or the information came from, and allows you to attach documentary proof images or other media. I can do all of this using the standard JEDCOM fact for illness. You can enter date spans, places like a hospital or care home, and importantly, sources. A simple source I've entered here might be as simple as personal information, diabetes, according to Aunt Agatha. That will transfer online and to other software. So other researchers and yourself in years to come will know exactly where that information came from. Let's take a look at this new DNA feature. 
DNA tracking from online services is a new challenge for the computer genealogist. Apart from the pretty graphics, is any of this tracking any better than what we see on online services and they're already providing? I don't really see that they are. In Roots Magic, I need to enter the person, send them organs, percentage, etc. here. Now, on the face of it, I really like the look of this, but as I've said many times before, pretty graphics don't help my research. Here on my heritage, I click the view tree and firstly look for surnames I might recognize as a clue. Roots Magic doesn't have a tree view. Family Tree Maker and many other programs do, including Family Historian. This is Family Historian and I manage my DNA matches using named lists, or name groups as they would be known in Roots Magic. Family Historian has record flags for whatever records you want to highlight. Roots Magic has color coding. My personal problem with color coding was remembering which color was which, but I'm hoping your memory is better than mine. These are the matches I've entered and chosen to track down further. I have the details here of the match quality and the MyHeritage predicted relationships sometimes in notes. Incidentally, notes cannot be added to the people view or groups in Roots Magic. I start to build out these trees from the data available, a bit like the centre of a jigsaw puzzle. You get all the little bits around the tractor and you start putting those together. Eventually that will become part of the bigger puzzle. I research and build out that tree until I can discover a family or geographic match to link up to my main tree. I feel I have to explain geographic match. Internet forums are full of comments like, they say there is no match, or things like, I can't find a match anywhere. All I can say is boy meets girl and the rest is history. You may never find any documented proof, but what you should find is a family overlap in the same geography and time frame. I don't need to explain that any further. Let me pick Jane Stokes here with 162 centimorgans and 2.3% match. I highlight her here on the list and select both on the family historian diagram selection. Here is what I have on her tree at present and I'm pretty close to proving that match to my tree. Roots Magic users have requested an ancestry style tree for a great number of years. It just never came about. Once I link that research up, I highlight Jane here on the lists, go to edit and record flags and check my DNA flag. Jane gets a little check mark, so I know that's linked up. This method is completely GEDCOM compatible and I must repeat my warning that Roots Magic Associations, Health and DNA Tracking are not. If your genealogy software is not set to speak that GEDCOM language, then your research is not going to be understood by other software or online services. So this approach works perfectly well for me. In the DNA note here, I can add things like possible first cousin twice removed, the name of the tree manager, etc. I can see that Roots Magic wanted to produce some pretty pictures and lists, but any Roots Magic user could stay JEDCOM compatible and use exactly the same approach with a name group. And I'm not going to go into name groups here. A Roots Magic user could use color coding as an alternative to the family historian record flag to show the link has been proved. One other point is you cannot display notes on people viewing Roots Magic, and Roots Magic has no ancestry style diagram view but you could still build out those trees in other ways. Roots Magic have a new flat report called DNA Kinship. However, Family Historian offers several DNA charts, all of which contain the calculated percentage DNA match you would expect for that generation. I think I've covered everything. Associations are certainly not useful for tracking slave owners or enslaved people, plantations, etc., despite Roots Magic's teasing suggestions. In Family Historian, I can not only use the witness events to connect all of these people easily, I can also link those people to the plantation itself and any note records. So there's a lot more power there, which I'll demonstrate in a video somewhere down the line when time allows. Here's our JEDCOM exported from Roots Magic 10. This is the language that transfers to other programs. And this is the latest version of Roots Magic 10. This top block is just software. It's like a header to the file. Each individual block starts with a zero, so this is the start of individual one. This is the block for individual one, and you can see there's no mention of association, health, or DNA here. You can, however, see the illness fact I enter, and also the source details below that. I searched the Roots Magic JEDCOM for the ASSO tag and found this non-standard event definition down near the bottom of the file. 
However, that tag is not used in relation to the individual associations we entered earlier. A quick look at the family historian JEDCOM exported shows how it should look. Here's the block for individual 1 and we can see the block which associates him to individual 2 with the relation neighbour. And also the reciprocal association for individual 2 referring him back to individual 1. Feel free to share the video and help others be aware of the trap they may be falling into using RootsMagic software. You may save another researcher a lot of pain and wasted time. That's it. If you're one of the modern day genealogists whose focus is to keep their ancestry data completely up to date, then do consider Family Tree Maker. RootsMagic still has this painfully manual exchange mechanism. I believe it is better than Family Tree Maker when exchanging data with Family Search. So if you're part of the Latter Day Saints Church, then that's probably the choice for you. If it's Ancestry as your focus, then I would recommend Family Tree Maker. I don't labour on doing that. I just upload my trees for some fishing, some hints, and some fresh documents, and I do that periodically. It saves a lot of time from my point of view, and it lets me build a quality family tree in Family Historian. Don't forget to subscribe and check out the videos to the left on dynamic charting and family historian and also transferring ancestry data into family historian via roots magic which demonstrates how painful the ancestry updates are still within roots magic users have long wished for a, a click all or accept all button it just hasn't come about i hope it's been useful thanks for watching and see you in the next one